So as Rosa was talking about, we're going to look at today what it means to follow Jesus. We've been looking at some of the invitations that Jesus has for us, uh, and these are personal invitations. Why? Because our God is a personal God, and we sometimes forget about what we have in Him and that He longs for that personal relationship with us through His Son. We've spent some time looking at it that uh, if we're thirsty, He longs to quench our thirst. Uh, if we uh, want, need rest, He longs to give us rest. We want to see how awesome He is. He says, come and see. Just come and look. If we need to be restored, that was the idea of come and eat that we looked at a few weeks ago. Come be restored. Come spend this meal, this time with me. And Robbie shared with us last week about how the old has gone and the new has come. The blessing. So this week, the question is, who who are you following? You know, today, that, that is something that we hear a little bit more about, maybe on Instagram. You can look at who are you following? Facebook. Who are you following? TikTok. Who are you following? Twitter. Who are you following? Who are you following in this life? Because there's something that's very interesting that Bob Goff says, you become like the people you hang around. And to great detail, you end up going where they're headed. So we need to examine who we're following. We need to examine where they may be leading us. Are they leading us to a life that's honoring God? Are they leading us away from God? Who? Are you following? With that in mind, let's stand and hear again the words from Mark. We stand in honor of the Word of God. As Jesus started on His way, a man ran up to Him and fell on His knees before Him. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. Teacher, he declared, I have kept, these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, go, sell everything and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his word. But Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God disciples were even more amazed and said to one another, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. And Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, No one who has left home or brother or sister or mother or father or children or field for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields, and with them, persecution. And in the age to come, 
eternal life. But many who were first will be last, and the last first. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Follow me. Again, who are you following in your life? A few weeks ago, when we were talking about the disciples, we looked at this quote by Ray Vanderlaan, follow a rabbi, drink in his words, be covered with the dust of his feet, says the ancient Jewish proverb. Disciples follow so closely that they would be covered with the dust kicked up from the rabbi's feet. That's what it is to be a disciple, to be so close to Jesus that you get dirty. You get dusty from his feet. I was reading a book by Carolyn Moore, and she says this, what bothers lots of us is not that Jesus calls, but how he calls. We want to define the terms before we take up the call. Like Jesus is a waiter, not the Messiah. How many of us, when we hear Jesus say, come follow me, we say, Lord, I'll follow you, but I want it to be on my terms. And when I want to follow. Because the issue with the rich young ruler really was not money. The issue was his heart. Where was his heart? It's a wonderful story. I I love how he, did you catch that? He ran to Jesus. He saw him. He ran to him. He fell at Jesus' knees almost as a a surrendering of himself, of, of saying, you are the one I need to follow. And then Jesus began to question him. Oh, I've done, I've I've followed the commandments all my life. One thing you lack. Go sell all that you have and come follow me. It was an issue of the heart. What has our heart? Does Jesus fully have our heart? Because if he does, then we will begin to lay down things for him. But if he doesn't have our heart, we will then begin to try to lay conditions down. I'll follow you, Lord, if. Jesus says to us, come and follow me. Mark 10, 21, one thing you lack, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. Think about what we will have because we follow him. And I couldn't help but think about Robbie. He sent me this picture. Robbie, Charles Pope, and a yellow case knife. And if you remember the story last week that Robbie told, a wonderful story of a man who loved the Lord with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Jesus has Charles' heart. Because he's willing to lay it all down before him. So the question comes back to us. Are we willing to lay it all down before him? Because we are not to be anxious about anything. 
As Jesus says, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the Gentiles, the non-believers seek after these things. But we're to live a life where we're not anxious because we've laid it down before Him. Martin Luther says, I've held many things in my hands and I've lost them all, but whatever I place in God's hands, I still possess. That which we surrender, that's what we give to Him because oh, my clicker's doing double again. With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible, right? So when we think about that which has our heart, and we think about, Lord, I don't know if I can surrender. I don't know if I can give up. I don't know if I can lay it down. It comes to this. With you, it may be impossible. But with God, all things. What do you need to lay down? What do you need to surrender? What do you need to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life? Everything is possible for him who believes in the Lord. We'll take just a few moments now to talk about some things that we can learn from Jesus if we're going to follow. We've talked about the rich young ruler, our heart, Now let's look at what we can learn from Jesus by following him from this passage. Jesus leads, will you follow, directing all the glory to God. Did you catch that in the passage? The the rich young ruler calls Jesus good. And what does Jesus say? Why do you call me good? No one is good except for God alone. Now, a lot of times people think Jesus was just trying to answer him, you know, you call me good, like a greeting, like, hello. How many times you just say, see someone, and they automatically say, I'm good. There's just that response, that normal response to our greeting sometimes. We don't really think about what we're saying. Now, this is how you throw someone off is when you say, they say hello to you, and you just say, I'm not good. Okay, you know, so some look at it as a greeting, but I think it's a little bit more here. The, the rich rung ruler was a greeting, but Jesus takes that greeting and says, why do you call me good? Do you understand what you're saying when you call me good? When you call me good, only God is good. So when you call me good, you see God. You're seeing Him face to face. That's who I am. And so in just a few moments, when I say, go sell all that you have and follow me, you're not just following a good teacher. You're following God. When we see God move in our life, in a mighty way, when we see Him touch us, when we see uh, how He moves, when we surrender, do we go to the fact that Jesus is God and the Word made flesh? And we give Him the glory for all that He's given to us. I think if we're going to follow, we need to learn that from Him. That everything we have is from Him because He's good. And we bring Him praise for that which we have. When Jesus leads, will you follow being motivated by love? Did you catch verse 21? He looked at Him and He loved him. A lot of times we have those around us and we want to move and change their lives and and sometimes it's even for the good, but what motivates our desire for them to be different? 
I think for me, I'm motivated a lot of times. Uh, right? Some days it's hard to find motivation. Some days motivation finds you. What motivated Jesus? Love. He looked at this rich young ruler, and it's his love, it's his compassion for him. It's motivating. Why? Because Jesus wants his heart. And he doesn't have his heart. Jesus looked at him and loved him. And, and as I was thinking about that, I want you to take just a moment. Maybe you can write it on your bulletin. Maybe you can just, in your heart and mind, think about this. Who do you need to reach out to and you're motivated by love for a change in their life? Who might that be? Not because you just want them to be different, not just because they ought to be, do, as, or, or, as you say. But who? Because of love, you long for their life to be different. Because if we're going to follow Jesus, that's what motivated him for this rich young ruler that was excited to follow until he realized that something greater had his heart. Jesus loved him. Ephesians 4.15, we need to speak the truth in love. There comes a time that there may be someone in our life that because of love, we have to speak truth into them. But the motivation, again, is love. And so we speak. After we prayed, we say, Lord, you got my heart in this deal? You got all of me going on? Have I surrendered anything to you? Rendered? Uh, I then, out of love, which motivates me, speak into someone else's life. Jesus leads, will you follow helping people identify that one thing that may be keeping them from giving their heart to Jesus? And for some of us, we may need to identify that one thing. What is that one thing? But you lack one thing, Jesus said. What might be that one thing that keeps us from wholeheartedly following God? But as we're dealing with others, what might be that one thing through prayer and love as we're trying to pour into their life, as we're trying to speak truth to them, what might be that one thing in their life that keeps them from fully following the Lord and surrendering themselves to Him? Why? Why? Because what has your heart? It comes back to that question. This rich young ruler who was ready to follow Christ who was evil, humbling himself before him, was not willing to surrender his heart. But then, that amazing thing well, then who can be saved? If that's the case, no one can. With you, with me, it may be impossible. But with God, in prayer, and surrender, all things are possible. Amen? Because that is to me what is going on in this story? What has your heart? What has their heart? 
as we're reaching out to those around us. Some may be a family member. Some may be a co-worker. Some may be a fellow student that the Lord has brought into our lives. What has your heart? What has their heart? As you're motivated by love to touch them in a mighty way. Why? Because nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Joseph Stowell said this. Keep looking in the road ahead and make sure Christ is there. Make sure He was walking in front of you. Keep walking with Him and then look over your shoulder and you'll find there was someone following you because you're following Christ. Many of us can say, okay, I'm following Him, I'm looking, I'm, I'm seeing where He's going, but the question also remains, because we are a disciple of His, because we love Him, because He has our heart, is there someone following us because of that love that we have for Him? Jesus says to us, come, follow me. How do you respond? As the praise team comes up, I'd like us to, again, take that bulletin. Maybe you wrote something down a while ago. What is the one thing? What is... What has your heart? Who has your heart? Who are you following? I challenge you to take some time thinking about that this week. But I also want you to take some time thinking about who is someone because you love them and that's what motivates you. And through prayer, you can speak into their life. Stand as we join together.